Well, what have we got here? Well, first of all, uh, thank you to all my subscribers and members. Um, I've been amazed by the response, to be honest, since I started doing videos on YouTube. I think these EV repairs are kind of a bit niche at the moment and people are interested and um, stuff like that. So thank you very much. So I'm doing this um, repair. So this car needs motor bearing. So this is a 67 plate Renault Zoe, 40 kilowatt hour. So it's only about 60,000 miles. Um, but the motor bearings have gone. Let's just have a little listen. Yeah, it sounds like a tube train. Obviously, that's meant to be basically near on silent. Sounds quite bad. Customer did actually drive it to me, which was um, interesting. Um, if it breaks down, then you need a new motor, basically. But, um, yep, no, you got it here. It's still working, and I'm going to put motor bearings in it. When I was taking it apart... Um, I noticed something else. Now, this is the socket where um, the charging... Um, so on the front of the Zoe, it's got the Renault badge. You pop it open, there's a Type 2 charging socket, and that's where you plug it in to charge it. So this is the um, charging socket. Um, and then that's the wiring limb from the charging socket, and that plugs onto here. So this is where the AC incoming power goes on. And when I notice that in here, see that bottom left pin try and keep this still that's all crusty the plastic's burned you can see it's blackened in the middle um, and that pin there is quite brown and crusty if you compare it to sort of this pin obviously that's what you want to see nice and shiny um, nice shiny metal and that's obviously no good it's a little bit of an issue with these Zoe's um, they were kind of designed for France and other European countries where it's more common to have three-phase power available. And they thought that three-phase AC charging would kind of be the thing with EVs. And obviously it's not gone that way. We've gone to DC charging, obviously with Chadamo and then with CCS being settled on as the kind of standard. Um, so if you do a lot of single-phase charging, you can have this issue. So basically this is the neutral pin um, and it's a bit smaller because it's just not designed really for lots and lots of long um, single phase charging. This didn't happen so much on the earlier Zoe's because the batteries were smaller. So there's kind of a limit to how long you can charge it because it's going to be full. And then it's, you know, um, obviously if this got a bit warm, then the current's going to stop flying because the car doesn't need any more. Whereas 20 sort of late 2016, early 2017 onwards, they made the um, battery double the size um, but unfortunately that pin is still the same size. They didn't change this connector. Um, I guess they would have had to redesign this part as well. So they didn't do that, so they left it like this. And this can happen. And the first Zoe I had, I bought with this issue. Um, and that's the blue one that's been featured in several you know, videos. Um, I had to fix that first of all. So um, yeah, that's not good. So I obviously had to tell the customer. So customers obviously expecting to pay for motor bearings. Um, and has accepted the price for that and we're cracking on with that obviously now i've had to say to the customer we've got a further issue now you can buy this socket this is a standard socket Renault don't make it so it's got a maker's got a brand on there so you can go on kind of like commercial electrical suppliers and you can buy this and you can buy the pins but obviously that pin is on a wire and that wire is really short and it's crimped in and there isn't space to make a good connection. And yeah, it's just kind of a risk. You're warranting something, you know, yeah. How good is that repair going to be? If you put an extra crimp or you change the length of the cable and this pin isn't exactly lined up, you're going to get a poor connection. And it's just going to happen again. So unfortunately, this filter box needs to be replaced. You can only replace it when the car is in this state with the motor stack out. If I just go backwards a bit. So it basically really needs to be done now. Um, and obviously this has got hot, so it's a connection between two components. And there's a bit of fluff in there. <laughs> right. Um, so this, it's upside down, but you get the gist. That's the, um, the neutral one. And you can see that that is heat damaged. It's burned, it's burned, melted that plastic. So obviously this needs to be replaced as well. So unfortunately, I've had to say to the customer, I'm afraid these two need replacing. Second hand, these are in the region of about 350 to 400 pounds each. So we've obviously got that sort of, um, you know, region um, of parts, sort of seven to 800. Obviously I've got to fit those. This is a not, um, not mega difficult, but a little bit of a pain in the backside. So this end cover panel's got to come off and the wires have got to go down through. 
So you can see this is a replacement one that's arrived. Um, it's got the comms kind of plug, and then these are the three phase wires for the power going onto the charging rectifier. So it's just something that needs doing. I feel a little bit sorry for the customer when this happens, but you know what? What can you do? Um, you know, not a lot. It's got to be repaired. Makes a lot more sense to do it now. It's obviously up to the customer. The car did charge, didn't have any charging issues, but sort of sooner or later, I suspect sooner, this this will um, have a high resistance or it will literally just, yeah, just melt and the connections will come away from each other. So those, two, you know, the, the, the sort of contact there and the pin there won't make contact anymore or the contact becomes poor. And when it does, the car does its checks before charging, it just won't charge basically. So um, if we just compare that to this replacement one, Obviously, this is what we want to see. Nice and shiny. No evidence of heat damage. It looks a little bit white. That's just because my head torch is really, really white. Um, oh, there you go. You can see that. Yeah, nice and clean and shiny. And that's what we want to see, really. But you can really see how much smaller this pin is compared to the others. And when you're charging, um, if you've got a charge point at home, 7 kilowatt charge point, pretty standard, 32 amps is going to be going through that pin. Um, so these other pins are um, the live one, two, and three for the three phases, uh, the earth, and that's a little um, what's called an interlock, so the car knows if the if the orange plug is connected or not, basically, um, just so it knows whether that whether that plug is in. So that's a little telltale to the car to say, I'm here, I'm plugged in. Um, yeah, and then you've got the three phases, um, earth, and um, yeah, the neutral. So yeah, not great design on this plug really um if it was obviously that big then you know um we wouldn't we wouldn't have this issue um but it's just so much smaller the irony is that in this configuration of car the maximum charge speed is 22 kilowatts which is three times your seven roughly so you're going to have about 32 amps going through those other pins so the pins have all got to carry the same but the neutral's tiny but sort of, as I say, really, I think it just, it wasn't an obvious issue um, in the Zoe 22, because it didn't charge for that long. It probably charged for about three and a half hours max, maybe four with a bit of balancing, but then the current's laying down anyway. Apologies for the wind. Um, so yeah, not great. I have to say on the ZE50, this configuration is exactly the same. So if you do, you know, use your ZE50 for commuting, do a lot of single phase charging, this could be an issue. If you've got a smart charge point, what you can do, um, other than plugging it in every night to do a, a top up charge rather than to do a long charge, um, another thing you can do is put a break in the charging. So if you're gonna charge for sort of 10 hours overnight, maybe put it on for five hours and then put a break in it so it stops charging for sort of 30 minutes or an hour, just to give this a chance to cool down, okay? Um, and over a period of years, that's probably going to prevent this issue from happening. So hopefully you can do that. It's not something I can do on my pod point because I can only set one kind of on period, I think. They might have updated it, not sure. Um, but yeah, certainly in the past I couldn't. It's not something I do anyway, I just stick it on. Um, but we kind of top it up every night, so not really a big issue. And we don't... It's more of an issue if you do a long commute every day and you need to do a long charge every night. That's not really our kind of usage pattern, so um, it's not worried me. But yeah, not ideal... Not ideal for the customer. Fortunately, parts are available. So this is exactly the same part number because there are various part numbers. And this is from a car that's done something like 14,000 miles. Um, and similarly, we've got another replacement charge point here. I've just swapped over. So this plastic backing is the original one from the car. So I've just unbolted the other one and bolted this one on, basically. But um, yeah, if we look at this neutral pin, nice and clean and shiny and all looking good. And I'll squirt a bit of contact clean in there as well just to make sure. But yeah, you can just imagine the you know if, if you're losing that spring you know just that tiny little bit of manufacturing is what i'm trying to say in how wide those those pins are and how much how much they have a spring and and squeeze the pin obviously you know you might be getting one side connecting and not the other but yeah we obviously can't leave that like that so sorry customer that's the way it goes had a chat with the customer i looked up the price of new parts um so this new is 878 plus fat um, which is kind of insane to over a grand just for that. I didn't even bother looking at the charge points. No point. You know, it's just not worth it. Just get low mileage, you know, low, low, low mileage parts. That's the only things I'll fit. Um, obviously, it takes a long time to fit these. And once these are on, 
Um, obviously, we have to do a little bit more testing. So swapping this over, all this faffing around, probably a couple of hours, because you, you also got to do a bit of extra testing as well, make sure charging is working, because you've just um, obviously changed parts that are involved in charging. So whereas normally, when you get the car roughly back together, you'd turn it on, make sure everything's okay, make sure the motor spins before you put everything back, um, and plug the charge port in, make sure it charges, just do a kind of quick charging test. But given what we've changed, there'll be a bit more testing involved just to make sure it's all okay before everything goes back together, obviously, because that's sensible. Um, so I don't worry about this tape. I just label all parts, basically, so I'll just put what it is on it that it's got a burnt neutral. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit more time involved. So realistically, it's going to add about a £1,000 to customer's bill, which is not ideal, but it literally is what it is. This is pretty... I do feel slightly sorry for this customer because it is really unfortunate at this mileage, 60-ish thousand, I think it might be 62. Um, you know, motor bearings are gone, pins burnt out, but at the end of the day some would say these cars were built for the warranty period um i wouldn't be so cynical obviously um but yeah no it just is what it is there's not a lot i can do about that really so sorry customer obviously your car's gonna get fixed it's gonna cost a bit more than expected all right i will catch you later and uh, take it easy cheers <laughs>